We play for keeps, Cuddy. You ain't heard about the huddle fire. We know with D Lane, we trying to get it off the muscle. Walters caught the pick and ran it back without a tussle. Blow the whistle, coach. It's time to get back to the huddle. Welcome to the 510 Huddle. It's your boy, Coach D Lane, in the building with my guy, my brother, Keaton. How you doing tonight, brother? It's going well, little brother, and how are you doing? Can't complain, man. We had a pretty solid <clears throat> Thursday night game, and that's what we're going to start out, uh, start off at with. We got a bunch of things to talk about, but we're going to start off with this Thursday night football recap. We had the Cincinnati Bengals. They was at home, right? Did that yeah. Wrong? Yeah, Since, uh, Cincinnati Bengals at home. They defeat the Miami Dolphins. Tua does go out early, <clears throat> I want to say second quarter, I believe. Around like, like mid second quarter, he goes out with a head injury. That was um man. So <clears throat> as far as clean and dirty play, I know I, I was watching the play from last week, brother, where he caught the concussion or back injury that he said they say or whatever for the Dolphins. Yeah. Um, I believe that play was dirty. <clears throat> I'm not sure yeah. what people are saying about this play. Now, I'm not actually gonna say dirty. I just believe that was more of a late hit last week's because they were actually similar plays plays as far as Tua's rolling out the pocket um, and Tua rolls out left last week versus Buffalo, he already threw the ball and then linebacker comes and push him. So I believe that was definitely late. I believe last night or tonight's hit with the Bengals, I believe that was a clean hit, clean regular football play. He did slam them down pretty hard, but I thought it was a clean football play. Well, last week was, was a cheap shot. Uh, tonight was just a normal football play. Like, I mean, I don't know what defensive players are supposed to do and anymore. They already have them doing gymnastics and laying down quarterbacks. So that was, that was just a normal play. I mean, unfortunately for Tua, um, he has a pretty extensive he has a pretty extensive injury history. So I mean, he's just a fragile player, and um, it was just an unfortunate event. Um, I mean, with his back injury from last week i mean if they ruled him out i mean it probably wouldn't have gotten this bad for him yeah man um i gotta say though brother even though they lost 27 15 miami i see what you mean as far as with that defense they are definitely fast and physical I, Mm -hmm. i love their approach tonight Um, defensively, especially in the back end as far as just being physical, up at the line of scrimmage, pressing guys in their face, um, making it very hard for the Cincinnati Bengals receivers. Chase got loose at the end for like one or two deep ones, but besides that, he had relatively a quiet night. It was really T. Higgins getting off um, on Xavier Howard, man, and he, he looked a little too big and too athletic for the kid at the end of the day. But I, I will say this. I, I believe I called him a wide receiver too before, and it's crazy because I loved Higgins coming out of college. Like I was very high on him coming out of Clemson. He's a one. He's a, T Higgins is a one, bro. They 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 in the conference. They right there with Devontae Wild on them and AJ and um, Hill. They right there, bro. Jamar Chase and T Higgins. T Higgins is a wide receiver one. Well, I mean, there is a reason why Coach Roy Williams offered him a basketball scholarship. I mean, this dude is just 6'5", and he's a freak, man. I love T. Uh, in terms of receiver duos, I mean, I'm biased because you already know how how I feel up, 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 because I have Chase at number one. Um, I think they can rival... Miami for sure, um, but I do want to see a little bit more from from T because um, Avian Howard was was bang banged up. Um, if you're a cornerback like him and you have a hamstring injury, um, it's pretty hard to play, and especially playing playing yeah. somebody like him. So, um, but credit to him, he had he he actually had a, a really great game. Yeah, uh, Baker, that linebacker, man, Jerome Baker, brother, fast, mm-hmm. fast, man, sideline, he, he definitely gets sideline on the sideline for sure. The Wilson kid, too, for Cincinnati, is it Mac? I don't think it's Mac Wilson. It was something yeah. else. But uh, the Wilson kid for Cincy, the, the, their, their linebacker as well, he, he got great range and can run sideline to sideline as well. They don't take him off the field. 
Wilson on his name. What's his name? Well, that's what I liked about this game because Logan Wilson. Since, Sorry to cut you off, brother. Logan no, no, Wilson. Well, since he and also Miami, like they have really good def- defensive. I know the story for Cincy this like um like uh this year has been like their their offense and like their offensive line. But since these defense is the reason why like they've been in games, like they're really good. And they're and they were really good last they were really good last year too. And I know um especially for Cincy, it was a lot of talk about the offensive line and a little bit for Miami as well. But both teams and granted it was the two of sack where he gets hurt, but both teams only gave up one sack apiece tonight. So I thought it was pretty good, clean pocket for both quarterbacks to operate. Um, yeah, it was an interesting approach tonight. It was a it was a real conservative approach for pretty much both teams. Um, for Joe, he was not aggressive as he typically is. Um, I think part of that is he's playing smarter, but I think another part is he doesn't want to get hit anymore and I don't blame him. Um, so I do think, unfortunately for some fantasy owners of, uh, guys like, um, for guys like, uh, Joe Jamar Chase, it might be a tougher year for him because, uh, unless they start scheming him in, in, uh, the, the quick game, those long, deep shots that they had last year, that's probably not going to happen until later on in the year. And, if I I gotta look back at their offense from last year, but now that I think about it, they probably didn't run a lot of motions and stuff. I remember, you know, Chase getting a few jet sweeps and tosses, um, toss plays and whatnot out the backfield. But I was really shocked tonight, brother. I know I tweeted and texted you, um, text you in the group chat saying that mm-hmm. I was surprised I didn't see more bunch sets. Um, bunch formations for Cincinnati's offense and some more um, motions, just some disguise, some some creativity on the offense to free guys up because beca- for the most part, Miami all night was pressed up a- across the board in man coverage. A couple times they gave them a few cover two looks, but for the most part, they were all pressed up. So I was really surprised not to see – some a little more creativity for the Cincinnati's offense to free up a guy like Chase to free up Boyd. Boyd got loose a little bit at the end, had two catches for like forty something yards. But um, yeah, I, I was just shocked by that. I mean, personally, I wasn't. Uh, Zach Taylor, even though he comes from that Nick Bay tree, um, I've never loved his offense. Uh, last year, they just won with like pure talents executing those plays. Um, I didn't find anything to be overly creative. It was basically just Joe Joe saying that um, my guys are better than yours and uh, they, they often were, so. Got you. Um, you, good on, you good on this game? Yeah, I mean, it was a pretty simple game, so. Let's move on, man, to our other segment. Give me that headline. We got about what four, what three, six games right here. Five yep. games. We got about five games. We're gonna discuss real quick. So I need brother, do your job, do what you do, man. Give me that headline, all right? Rams go on the road to play the San Francisco 49ers. Give me that headline. Homemade turnovers. Um, I have I have the 49ers winning. Um, these are two teams that. I know that the Rams are two and one, but these these two teams are a little bit disappointing with, with how they've played played this this year. Um, they both do pretty dumb things. And I do think though the 49ers are in desperation mode. So I do think because both teams do pretty dumb things that the 49ers are gonna force the Rams into a few more dumb things. And I do think the 49ers come come out with a win here. I love it. Won't argue with none of your points there. I will just say this and add this point. I'm going to take the Rams just because and it's crazy. I'm not jumping off the wagon yet, but I have seen some concerns, for me at least, with Kyle Shanahan in his offense, especially with the run game. Haven't seen the creativity there or haven't really seen that explode or pop yet. Um, I'm going to go with the Rams, man, just because I believe McVay and company 
are are a little bit better, are a little more in the, into their groove right now. I believe they already laid that laid their egg in Week One versus the Bills. So I got the Rams winning here. Right now it's plus one or minus one, one and a half, 49ers. I got the Rams going on the road and winning this one, brother. I believe Kyle's just not in, in, in it, into it right now as far as from a play calling perspective. And then I believe Jimmy, like you said, both teams teams do uh, do, do stupid stuff, especially Matt Stafford throwing the football. And you could be right. They may cause a few more turnovers for the Rams. I'm going to just go the other way and say Jimmy G – Causes a few more turnovers, uh, turnovers, and Jim, um, Kyle Shanahan doesn't call the best game. And I'm gonna go with the Rams. It's hard to disagree with those points. I just think the 49ers are deeper, and I just think that they're desperate. Um, I picked them to get to the NFC Championship game at the very least, and I know the NFC is weak, but it's still the NFL. Um, just being one, one and three is not a great thing. And um, I just think that they're mentally tough e enough. And I think Kyle is going to have them ready. So um, that's ultimately why I am leaning, leaning toward the, the 49ers. Got you. And uh, I think that's the main reason for the most part, why we kind of stayed away from this game, right? Yeah. We, yeah, it's kind of too close to call it. These teams kind of beat up on each other and it's a division matchup. So let's let's move on to another divisional matchup, another big big game, especially for the Las Vegas Raiders. Yes. Um, this is another game that we stayed away from as well, brother. Mm -hmm. give, give me that headline: Raiders at home versus the Denver Broncos. Don't want to watch um, <laughs> these are two funny. mediocre That's teams funny. at best right now. Um, I'm gonna keep saying it. I get the Raiders are 0 and three, but to my eye, they they still look like they're functioning better than the, the Broncos. The Broncos are the more talented team, but I do think that because the Raiders are 0-3 and, and they're not going to go 0-17, so they're going to get a win at, at some point. And I do think that their first win is going to come this is going to come from uh, this uh, game. Um, desperation. It's it's just like the, the 40, 49ers. And um, I think they edge them out barely. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not, you know me, brother. I'm not feeling McDaniel, McDaniels right now. And I'm looking at this game as far as when, when I see two even, evenly matched up teams, I like to go on with strength on strength. Let's go on that, right? I believe the Denver Broncos' strength right now, especially with Russ and company trying to figure out all those new pieces and parts on offense, I believe that their defense is elite. I believe their defense is damn near probably like top five, bro. I'm not even gonna lie, and they're very they're very good in tackling. I believe um, last week, uh, you know me, I loved that game them between the Niners, ugly game, but those was two mirror mirrored evenly matched defenses that was kind of slugging it out. But I believe Denver's defense is slightly better than the oh, uh, excuse me, not the Oakland Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders uh, offense. Me personally, so I'm going with the Denver Broncos, man. I mean, this is a toss-up game. I'm just gonna lean on the desperation. <laughs> yeah, I said the same shit last week when they went in to play Tennessee and fucking laid the egg. Yeah. Um, Rolling with I that mean, McDaniels train. You can you you can ride that one by yourself, brother. I'm cool. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> all right. Let's move on, man. Give me that headline. Two a young goat and an OG goat right here. We got Pat mm -hmm. Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs going on the road at Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus Tom and Tom Brady. The headline for this game is the tables have turned. Um, their last matchup, it was, it was the chiefs that had a lot of key injuries. Um, this time it's the, the bucks, um, ultimately, um, I think the key for the chiefs in th this game is for Eric B enemy and Andy Reid to stop taking the ball out of their best player's hands when he's hot. Um, yeah. I don't understand why they 
literally decide to like it's one thing because they don't stay with the run at all and it's kind of like they just throw it in there to like throw it in there and it's like there's no rhyme or reason they just it's just like like, I, i just don't understand it but that's andy for you yeah but as long as they stay true to who to who they are the chiefs in my estimation should win this game i i'm not gonna go too deep here brother just because this is one of our bla- uh flaming five picks but so i'm gonna wait but we got we got the chiefs winning this game right going on the road and covering the uh, minus one the bucks are actually favorite in this game i was shocked about about that i guess because casey's coming off a loss the bucks defense is real i will give them that mm-hmm. but Fair. Yeah. Yeah, let's move on. Give me that headline, brother. This is a good one, man. Involving my Eagles. Doug Peterson comes back home to Lincoln Financial Field and plays the Philadelphia Eagles in a revenge game. What's your headline? Jalen is hurting. Um, For me, the Jags are physically capable of, of matching up with this team. I think the Jags are are one of the handful of teams that actually can match up with the Eagles, mm. and I think this is a I think this is a potential statement game for Trevor Lawrence. Um, I think T Law, with how he came out this year so far, is really is really establishing himself as a top half of the, the league quarterback. I think the next step for him will ultimately be being a top ten quarterback. Um, and I think this is the type of game where he can really make a statement because um, people are really believing in the Eagles. And if he goes in there and just plays well and gets a win, um, I think that's going to put everyone on notice. And he's going to show people why he was the was not only the first pick, but why he is considered the, the best prospect since Andrew Luck. And maybe since Peyton or even John Elway. Got you. Again, I'm not going to dive too deep here because, again, this is another pick on our Flaming Five. We got the Jags going on the road and covering. You know, I got my Eagles winning, uh, winning this game, but I'll touch on that game a little bit in a little bit. Last one for our headline segment. Bills on the road, a little banged up, a little injured. Um, they go on the road to Baltimore. To play the Ravens, it's supposed to be raining, a little bit of bad weather in this game. The Ravens are supposed to be, I, I got to look at the injury report, but they are supposed to be getting somebody back on defense. I got to look. But, um, yeah, so the Baltimore Ravens at home versus the Bills. What's your headline, brother? It's going to be a la marvelous finish. Um, for me, this is going to just be a really fun game. Um, I think Lamar and uh, Josh Allen have played the quarterback position the best so far this season. Um, I think these are the two MVP front runners. Um, I think I think Mahomes is a clear second or third, quote unquote, right now. Um, but ultimately I do like that. Yeah, because for me, I look at it like this, those two, they are they are the offense, whereas Jalen is executing his at pretty much at like a very high level, but these guys, like they are the entire offense. Jalen to me is not the offense. He, he, he's, he's just running it at a very high level. I won't push back on that brother. Right. And right now for me, I got it. Lamar Allen and like, it's damn near two a and two B Allen and hurts for me. I think Lamar is the clear cut one. I would just say hurts got some of the best action, especially if he keeps up this pace and performance. Because I believe, like you, your your point is valid. With they're the whole offense, I got that. But this kid, I believe, has took took that the biggest step, kind of like what Lamar did in his MVP year from the year before. Because he kind of sim- he has you know uh, kind of a similar start to Jalen Hurts, right? As far as he came in at the end of his real rookie year for Joe Flacco, right? The next year, kind of took over, and then it was the next year he won the MVP, right? Brother, or did he? Win well, he he won the MVP in the second year, man. Like, oh, okay, so he he, 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 he peaked a little earlier than hurts. Yeah, but you get what I'm Lamar's saying, right? Different. You get what I'm saying, though, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. A but, little but bit even of with that, yeah, I 
the there there is but even with that Lamar was still their their offense then whereas Jalen to me is just ex- executing that that's not a bad thing um this is just how I operate I tend to give guys who are doing more with what they're asked um I like I like to give them the the nod but I mean it's apples and oranges right now I mean it's no, only for sure is, um, so. but we can't it for sure is but we can't sleep on some of those weapons right now Bateman's looking for real he's looking like he could be a real one I love he Duvernay I, lo- I like Duvernay last year he does have a real tight end so we can't sleep on some of the weapons he has and then as well as far as with um Jalen brother they're asking him to do more because what did we say last year? Yeah, Sirianni and and the crew wanted to come in and be a running team, but we ended up, or passing team, but we ended up morphing into a running team because we realized Jalen just couldn't throw on that level. Right now, he's he's looking like he can throw on that level, and we're throwing the ball 30-some plus times. So um, I'm not saying that puts him, I'm not saying that puts him number one. I'm just saying I definitely think you got to give him a few points for just that step he's taken so far. Right now, it looks like he took a major step. Oh, no, he's in the top four. I mean, I I think it's four guys, and that's pretty pretty much it. Um, gotcha. But ultimately, I do think the Bills win um, just because Baltimore's defense is awful. They are the worst defense in football to me. They can't rush the passer. They can't rush the passer while Eve and blitzing. Their corners, Marcus Peters is still not all the way healthy. I mean, he's battling, but he is not himself. Marlon Humphrey is still good. Um, they just ask him to do too much crazy shit. So, so all these grading systems, he's never going to grade out great because they ask him to do too much crazy shit. But he's still really, really good. Um, I do think there's a slight drop off, but I think because he's coming up of because he's coming off of an injury too, um, I think he'll pick pick it up. But the other guys. They're really young, um, and there's a lot of breakdowns. I don't know who's responsible, but typically when there's a lot of breakdowns, it's from the the young guys. Um, so just like so, just from like across across the board, um, I think Lamar is gonna keep them in it. But ultimately, I do think Josh Allen and that offense is gonna be a bit too much. And even though the, the Bills they have some some guys out, they're still better than than Baltimore's defense. So I do think they'll they'll be able to at least stop Baltimore once or twice. Whereas I don't know how Baltimore stops Josh Allen unless Josh Allen just has a bad day. Yeah. So who who you got winning that game, brother? I got the Bills. Um, I think it'll be a close game, but I got the Bills in a gotcha. semi convincing fashion. Yeah, I know we talked uh, before about, you know, script and play calling and bad weather. And I know you you got a fair point as far as that Ravens all run game isn't as potent as it has been the last few years. But I, I still believe Lamar is enough to get it done. And they may get Dobbins back as well. Like I said, this should be a rain ugly game. I'm going. I'm going to take Lamar and company just because I believe we are sleeping on the, of those weapons that I was talking about a minute ago. Can a rookie corner with uh, without possibly Poyer again, without Hyde for sure again? Can he hold up against a Duvernay as fast? Can he hold up against a Bateman? I don't know. And then without those two safeties, who's guarding uh, Mark Andrews, brother? I don't know, man. I got the Baltimore Ravens 21-17. My thing with the Bills defense is that is that they don't play man. Um, so, so those young DBs are never put in any compromising positions, really. So that's kind of why I'm taking the, the Bills. Got you. Who that? Tyreek? Or you know, it, was, it was Waddle. And I think Tyreek did too. But Waddle got behind them last week without them two safeties, brother. That's key. Trust me. You know, I know you know too, cause you play safety. I think you say, come mm-hmm. on, on that back end, that that those two guys, especially those two guys, cause they're elite of the elite. Poyer and Hyde, I'm pretty sure they're probably calling the defense, or at least making all the checks and getting the defense set up. I, no, they are. And I was but... worried about that last week going into Miami's game. I'm I, I'm still worried. I got I got the Ravens, brother. I, that's gonna be one of my. I hope that's a morning game. I think that's an afternoon game. It is. I'm gonna have that on. It's an afternoon game. No morning game. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I might have that on the big screen. My Eagles on the big screen, sorry. But I'm going to have them up for sure. <laughs> you got anything else on that game, brother? 
Um, no, um, it's going to be a close game, but um, I, I just think Josh Allen, because of the Ravens defense, is just going to make a few more plays. Do you think that's sneaky? It ends up being like a game of the week type feel, or do you think right now it's still a I, I think it. Not a I, I think Pat it is. Goat. Not Pat. I, I think this is more of a game of the week, just because I think it'll be more more exciting. Um, I do like Mike Evans is coming back, so. Yeah. But I I just think this game will be more exciting, and you you know I think Patrick is the number one quarterback in football, but. I do think Josh Allen and uh, Lamar are playing at a slightly higher level than him right now, and also Tom. Um, so I just think that these two are just going to make a few more I- exciting plays. So I'll definitely lean lean towards this this game for sure. Got you, man. Got you. All right. Well, let's move on. Got about two more segments here for you. We got our flaming five, and then we got our power five rankings. Let's start yeah. off with our flaming five lock bets of the week. Like we said, me and brother had a little rough week last week, guys. All right, but fair, yeah. fair warning. We did, we did say ahead of time we did not like none, none, no matchups last week. It was probably yeah. the best game last week was on Thursday night football. That was the Chiefs and the Chargers. Okay. Yeah. This week we got a lot more better matchups and some good games, and we're definitely confident in this flaming five. All right. Now, these are our five lock bets for this weekend. All right, we'll run through them real quick. Brother can touch on them. We got the Steelers um, versus the Jets. We got the Jets covering minus three and a half. We like this. First game back for Wilson. I actually might like me and brother might like his passing yards, too. His prop is at mm-hmm. like 202 or 200 flat. He got weapons, man. And he got weapons that can stretch the field. That's dangerous. With Elijah Moore, Corey, Corey Davis, and Garrett Wilson, that 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 young boy, that young young man is bad. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. <laughs> that young boy is a bad boy for real. Um, Brees Hall, I like him still, and then Michael Carter. So the weapons is there for him to put up yards and points, and for them to cover. And the Steelers, man, they're they're nothing special. They're to be honest, right now this year, and it really looks like Mike T might suffer his first losing season. The Milfinator is back. I'm so excited to watch Zach, man. He's back, and he's just going to bring juice. Um, Joe, he's had his moments of of playing well, but he's not that inspiring to that team. He's kind of just blah, and Zach, he's just going to bring juice. Um, It's his first game back, and I know playing Mike – I know playing Mike and the Steelers is not going to be an easy task for him in his first game back. But I do think that because of the excitement and just his overall talent, I do think the Jets are not only going to cover, I'm picking, I'm picking the Jets to, to win. Oh, okay, brother. Yeah, I'm picking them okay. to win. You got him to win. Do you agree with me? You think Mike Tomlin suffers his first losing season as a head coach? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, I think that in so order for them to individual. move forward, yeah, I, in order for them to move forward, they'll probably have to take their lumps this year. Kenny Pickett is going to play at some point. We just don't know when. And even when he's in the game, I don't know if that'll just be in a be a huge upgrade because I'm still not a fan of their offensive scheme and their play calling and that offensive line is still awful. So yeah, I I, I will do. say this. Let me ask you this question, brother, because you said some good points earlier. I'm gonna tie it back to with that. Yeah. By no means. Nobody's saying Kenny Pickett is no Joe Burrow. We got that. Mm-hmm. I definitely understand that. But I remember your point earlier as far as when you said last year you know, um, I believe it may be a similar situation from what the Bengals had last year as far as when you said, you know, Joe just said, Joe and Taylor said, yo, we got guys, man, and our guys are just a little bit better better than your guys. Um, yeah. We're just going to put the ball out there. What I've seen from Kenny Pickett so far, from the little bit of college I've seen, I've seen from him in the preseason, I see a guy that looks comfortable in the pocket, that definitely can sling the ball around the field way more at, at a at a better clip and more accurate pace than Trubisky. And with those weapons, 
I'm not saying they're Chase. We don't know what Pickens can be yet. Shit, he can come on like Chase. We still don't know because he doesn't have a quarterback yet. But I mean, they're they're pretty close. I mean, that's if, what I'm saying. Pickens. If, that's if what I had to take you, like the three, like the three guys. Like I I know Chase is the best of like any of them, but like three, I would take the Steelers. Because Deontay Johnson's real. Claypool's yeah. a freak. And then yeah, Pickens just looks like a raw, untapped talent that just yeah, needs a like, veteran yeah, like he's better quarterback. Than Boyd. Yeah, he just needs a quarterback, man. That's it. Yeah. If, if that young guy gets a quarterback, it's over with. So, man, yeah, I, man, I feel bad for my guy, Mike T, because I really love him as a coach. But he needs to just play the young bull, man. Play the young bull, take your lumps this year, and be ready to go back next year. Because right now, it, it's just too much talent in your division alone. I think that they're still in the race, though. I, at least realistic. I mean, you know, they're still in the race just because they they're one and one in the division right now. They did beat the Bengals, brother, even though they lost to the Browns. Yeah, but they're they're gonna end up being fourth, unless um, un, like unless knock on wood, <laughs> Lamar or Joe Burrow or the Browns just have a massive collapse. They're gonna finish fourth. Sorry, brother. But- in fact, let's move the Browns up right now. Let's talk about them. This is another team that's on our blazing fire, or excuse me, our flaming fire. We have the Browns going on the road. I believe they they play Atlanta minus one and a half. We got the Browns covering. Yeah. Brother, I know I brought it up to you a minute ago or off the record, and you can bring it up again or whatever your points were. I still got the same questions and feelings about the Cleveland Browns defense, man. And I've been having this – this feeling about them for the past three years. No, How do you have two elite defenders in Denzel Ward and Miles Garrett and your defense always defensive play always comes up subpar, especially as a defense. Like I don't I don't believe they've ranked in the top ten since those guys have been there. And it seems like it's a lot of individual play on their defense when you watch them week in, week out. Doesn't really look like they work as a unit. What's going on with the Cleveland Browns on defense, for especially with having all that talent? They always have key guys hurt. I mean, like, their stars are always there. So, like, people always, like, expect them to be great. But they always have key guys hurt. I mean, like, over, like, the last few years, I mean, Greedy Williams has been out, which is why they went and drafted that kid from Northwestern. And I don't know why I – oh, uh, his name is Greg Newsom. And even he's hurt. Um mm-hmm. I mean, um, Mac Wilson, he's a good player. He he also gets banged up. Um, Owusu Koromora, he's a very talented linebacker. He's he's also hurt. Clowney, he stays hurt. Um, so on paper, when you go into the season, that screams, forget top 10, that screams possibly top one. But um it's like none of their key guys can ever stay on the field at the same time. They're always playing at different times. So mm-hmm. they always have a lot of backups in there. Got you. Got you. Um, you got any points for the game? Then versus Atlanta. We got that. We, this is one no. of our playing five picks. No, even if miles Garrett doesn't play, the Browns are just better. Um, as long as the Browns do not turn the, the ball over, they should win. Facts. Don't turn the ball over. Hand the ball over to Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. You win the football game. It's that yeah. simple. Um, let's move on. Brissett did look good last week. Uh, I think yeah. that was Thursday night football. He yeah. Command, he command, yeah, he commanded the offense really well. Let's move on, man. Another good one. We had to put this on um we had to put this on our flaming five, man. It's against my team, my Eagles, right? But this mm-hmm. is a good game, man. Keaton kind of hit on all the points for the Jags earlier. But they are young, they are athletic, and they are coached by Dougie P, a guy that knows the ins and outs of Philadelphia like nobody else because he's the only guy that's brought a championship to my city. So mm-hmm. I will forever be in the favor of Doug Peterson. I will forever love that man. Still still hurt that we let him go. That's another conversation. He's coming into, t- into town with a, a young elite quarterback, man. And I'm scared, bro. Not gonna lie. You know, I'm I'm very confident in my team and feel like I, I got us to win. I got us to cover. I mean, I got us to uh, midline. I got us to win. But mm-hmm. me and you did come to agreement. We believe Jacksonville can cover this six and a half. I believe it's just a little high, man. I believe the way they're playing right now, brother. Jacksonville's playing right now. 
and with the Doug Peterson factor, I would say this line should be closer to more like a three, three and a half, if we're being honest. Maybe even a two and a half. I really like I, I like this matchup. I'm kind of mystified why the Eagles are favored by so much. And you know how high high I am on your team, but yeah. I do think this will be one of their losses. I have I have the jabs pulling off, pulling off the upset. Um I do think Trevor's going to come. And one one other thing, you already mentioned it. Dougie P was fired. <laughs> he this is did a real... not want to leave. So, brother, is this correct? Last week, Car- so Carson, you got to remember, Carson had that weird uh, in-between year. He, he was with yeah. the Colts. Now he's with Washington. I don't know if that – is that a real uh, revenge game last week? I mean, I know he lost, but was that a revenge game? I feel like Dougie P really got a revenge game here. Like, he he got fired, bro. I, I think it was for Carson just from the standpoint of how it ended. Um, you know how I used to defend him because I, I thought he was taking on too much crap because he was playing with crap around him basically towards the end because everyone was always hurt um and he did get to the eagles to the playoffs twice um so i thought he was actually three actually three times actually but um i i just thought he was taking on too much crap never played more than like five playoff snaps that's the crazy well yeah i i know but still like him him at the helm like controlling the team at least got him there but no for sure um i do think that for dougie because he was fired he's gonna have an fu mentality and uh i think his team is gonna follow that so it's gonna be think, a close game but i do have i think this could be a sneaky out. game of the week too brother like it yeah. end up being a really good game i got this like a 31 28 type game <laughs> so Maybe like i said i'm scared be- for my team because for the past two weeks, really every game this year, we kind of stalled out, especially in the second half on yeah. offense. We kind of stalled out on offense. I think I'm just being a chicken because I keep saying how the Jags, like, they look the part. And, like, if there is a Bengals team of, like, this year, it's them. Um, well, I'm just going to say it now. I think they will. I think they're going to win that d- division. Um, obviously, it's still early, and a lot of things can happen. But – I do think they're going to make the, the playoffs now. Um, and I think this is the type of game to prove, to pretty much prove to the entire world that uh, they are for, for real. Because some people are dismissing that Chargers game um, because the Chargers had a lot of guys out. So I have the Jags squeaking out a win in Philly. Got you, man. Uh, last two on our Blazing Five. We got the Cowboys. Really don't gotta speak much about this one. We got no. the Cowboys minus three and a half. Uh, they play the Commanders. We got Dallas covering. Commanders are a shitty team. We've seen that mm-hmm. last week versus my Eagles. Their de- their defense is terrible. They especially especially how they looked last was that last year? No, that was the year before when they when they almost beat the Bucks in yeah. the playoffs. That, first, that defense was for real. And I know they don't have no Chase Young right now. But, but still. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, brother. But still, they, you still got what two or three other first rounders on that on that D line? No, Chase you got Young? four other first rounders on that D line without Chase Young. Yes, you got four. Yeah, that don't make no sense. Like, Miles Sanders didn't have the best rushing game last week. I will say that. I think he had like 15, 16 carries for only like fifty yards. So I will say. But that. even last year, when Chase Young was playing before the ACL, like they, I don't know what. Don't get me started on like they're so disappointing. Yeah. They're I mean, so I can't name nobody in their secondary either. Their secondary is good. I mean, with that much talent on your front four and three. I mean, it should help them, but 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 they can't get home. And I don't like I said, don't get me started because they're so disappointing. Talent wise, brother, I know the production ain't there. I mean, it, it, they look pretty solid, especially early on in the first couple of weeks. But talent wise, they they got a nice little trio too. They may they may have a top five trio of receivers if Samuels keeps coming on strong. They do. Yeah, they because I, I like Dotson, and we all know Scary Terry's legit. Mm-hmm. Washington, they yeah they got they got a scary trio over there, man. Let's go to our last game on our flaming five. 
We got the Bucks at home versus the Chiefs. We got the Chiefs to cover right now. It's minus one the Bucks. So that should let you know that the wise guys, they everybody really thinks the Chiefs should win this game, right? Because when you're mm-hmm. at home, you usually get three. They do have Mike Evans coming back, but I don't think that's enough. I still believe Brady in that banged up offensive line just will not be able to generate enough pressure on Pat in his offense as far as putting up points to match him. Um, but this should be a good game because I definitely want to see Andy Reid versus Ty Bowles. I believe they always deliver great matchups versus each other. Um, and Ty Bowles, even though they lost last week, and it was a slugfest, but, but, uh, and I know we spoke on it between both teams, um, Green Bay and the the Green Bay Packers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last week, but the second half adjustments uh, adjustments that Ty Bowles and the Buccaneers made, they they really put they really put a noose around the <laughs> around the Bucks ne- neck, man, or excuse me, the Packers neck, and they didn't they they didn't let up. They really put their foot down, didn't did not let up. Um, so I'm definitely interested to see that Andy Reid versus um, Ty Bowles matchup, brother. I, I think the Bucks have the number one defense in football right now. Um, so I do think it'll be a great matchup. One thing that I am interested to see, I do think Vita Vea can play a huge role in this game. I mean, I mean, like he he always does, but especially right now, because Trey Smith, uh, I think he's at left guard for Kansas City he's the weak link on that offensive line. Um, so I think Vita Vea will have his way with, with him. Um, so I do think that Patrick Mahomes is going to be all under, under more pressure than what he's been under. But ultimately I do think he'll make enough plays as long as the enemy and Andy don't do anything stupid. Um, I do think he'll make enough plays to squeak out a win. Got you. Got anything else, brother? Because we're going to end here, man, with our power five. No. Power five ranking. I'm good. So I'm not sure about you. Do got a little recency bias going on with my my power five after tonight's game. Because um, after tonight's Thursday night's football matchup, I pretty much have the exact same four, four out of five from last week. But I made one swap out. So I got the Bengals. I, sw- I swapped out the Miami Dolphins. I put the Bengals in there, man, because I believe that offensive line and Joey Bur- uh, uh, Joe Burrow, they're coming together and finally finally looking. Um, they're gelling. They look a little better tonight. They only gave up one sack. Not much pressure on Joe Burrow. And early on in the game, I know not late, I think he ended with 20-something carries for only like 60 yards. But early on, Joe looked real good running the ball, and they got a little bit of a push. Still need some work there, though. I think they got held up and stopped on the goal line like two or three times trying to run the ball in. So still some work to do for the Bengals. I got the Bengals number five. I got my Eagles number four. I got the Bucks number three. I got the Chiefs number two still, and I got the Bills number one. I mean, mine has, hasn't changed. The only thing that I've changed is the Chargers. Um, a, they are way oh, too banged up. And B, the Chargers, they still do Chargers things. Um, so uh, the team that I swapped out for them, and this is a tough one. Um, I yeah. thought that there were a couple of teams that were in the, the running for this, but I'm taking a leap of faith, honestly. I call call me crazy i'm putting i'm putting the jaguars at five are they three and over right now or are they two and one they're two and one because they blew it against washington but i got them five um will they they stay there probably not but i mean i'm keeping it so i got the jags five i have um i have the bucks four i have the eagles three i have the bills two chiefs one um, I know the Bills and Chiefs lost, but they beat themselves more so than those other teams beating them. Um, and kind of, and also like the Bucks too. I mean, they were really banged up, and they still should should have won. Um, I think this Eagles Jags game is going to be really telling telling for me on like who who will really have that uh, third third spot for me. Got you. Um... Did you have that? Did you have it like that last week, brother? You have my Eagles in front of the Bucks, or was the Bucks? Yeah, I did. 
Got you. Any pushback with my Bengals or with the Bengals at five? No, because I don't care that they're two and two. I just believe in Joe. I I believe in Joe Burrow. I mean, I have them six. Um, I think yeah. that they are, are. I think that they are a complete team, um, excluding their offensive line, obviously. But overall, like offense, defense, special teams, I think they're one of the more complete teams. Um, so I have no push pushback on that. Got you. I know earlier I forgot to mention this for Thursday Night Football. I believe McDaniels, McDaniels called a pretty solid game. I know you said they uh, both teams look pretty conservative. I, he did at times, but when when I want to show the reason I want to shout him out, he still looked a little aggressive and called some uh, called a solid game when Teddy Bridgewater came in, right? And then yeah. I also brought that up to ask you, brother, do you believe? Let's say Tua is out for lo- the long term or out, you know, we ain't got to say for the season, but let's just say for a long while, a long term um, c- scenario. Do you see this team still winning with Teddy Bridgewater, and do you still see this team at least making the playoffs with Teddy Bridgewater playing majority of the games this year? Can they? Yes, because I do think they're that talented. Will they? I don't think so, because say whatever you want to about Tua. One thing, there are two things about him. He's accurate, and he will take chances. Now, whether he's physically gifted enough to pull, pull it off, that is a totally different d- debate, but he will give his playmakers a chance. Teddy has never demonstrated that at any point in his life. It's true so, as far as consistently pushing the ball downfield, brother, but I, I just wanted to say this. To, first of all, he he threw Tyreek short on that one because he had him if he would have just put it out in front of him. And then shit, the one that um that the one that Bridgewater hit to was it Tyreek in the second half? That shit looked like a Tua S throw to me. He threw all of his body into it. Shit, it looks like. Yeah, no, oh, but no, it doesn't look much he, different. Is but but, but he won't do it consistently. Oh, I, like I'm, I'm just saying, like Tua will do it. I'm just saying, Teddy has never shown that. I mean, unless if he all of a sudden changes in what year ten. I mean, I'm gonna lean no. Unless that defense just generates a lot of turn turnovers. What about for you? But as far as from McDaniel's standpoint, I don't think he really needs to change much, brother. I think no, he, he doesn't. Keep calling. Yeah, because like we, you don't. They ideal. Um, ideally, you would like to th- push the ball down the field and throw the ball and get those explosive plays, right? But when you have two of the fastest guys in in the NFL, just get the football in their hands. Get yeah. in the quick game. Get them the ball in space. Let them go out and make plays. They will get the 80 for you. <laughs> they will get the explosive play for you. Just get the ball in their hands. So I, I got to look at their schedule, man. Let me pull it up right now. Let me pull their schedule up. Fuck that. Let, let, and then last up. thing on the McDaniels thing. This is an interesting thing. topic. Go ahead, bro. I do think that and, – and I don't blame either team for being a bit more conservative tonight. I think it was more so them just saying – as long as we do not make a mistake, we will win. I think both teams felt that. So I didn't have an issue with it. Um, and, I mean, when your backup quarterback is Teddy Bridgewater, I mean, it's hard to it, like it's hard to give the appearance that um, you are aggressive. And I love McDaniels. I'm honestly. looking at their schedule. They got a... I got a pretty favorable schedule. They got some heavy hitters kind of in the middle towards the end of the season. They got the Bills. They got the Niners. And they got the Browns. I would say those are the best teams r- remaining on their schedule. But other than that, they got the Vikings, the Jets, the Steelers, the Lions, the Bears, the Texans. All those games are winnable. They do got the Chargers, too. But, yeah, they got a lot of winnable games on here, Yeah, if you ask me. It'll just come down to will Teddy give his playmakers a chance to make plays? If he does that, sure. But I have not seen that at any point in time in in his NFL life. Got anything else, brother? That's it for me. All good, man. We'll we'll have this out for you guys ASAP. Like, subscribe to all social media platforms and to the YouTube page. And thank you for listening and for your appreciate that, guys. All right.
We play for keeps, Cuddy. You ain't heard about the huddle fire. We know with D Lane, we tryna get it off the muscle. Walters caught the pick and ran it back without a tussle. Blow the whistle, coach. Time to get back to the huddle. Oh, 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 oh,